Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In today's video, we're gonna be installing our front blitz bumper on this fourth gen Toyota Tacoma. So starting off under the hood, we're gonna remove this center plastic cover. It's just held in with eight clips. They are a common clip amongst Toyotas. So you're just gonna push in on the center and then lift up, popping those free. And then you can pop out the center, allowing them to be reused. Once you get all of the clips removed, this should just lift easily out of the way and can be set off to the side. Moving over toward the passenger side, you've got four more of those clips here on this upper air intake section. Again, same style clip, so just pop the center and lift up. And then you should be able to lift this entire section out of the way and again set it off to the side. With that out of the way, you can access your wire harness connections underneath here. It looks like there's just two on our truck, but depending on options package, you may see less or more. Go ahead and press the thumb tab on these and then pull them apart. From there, you can grab a 10 mil socket and you'll be removing three screws across the front of the truck here. So you've got one out at each headlight and then one here in the center. Now, depending on how your truck is configured, this area may look a little different than what you see here. We are working on skids currently, so we have this factory front cover already removed and we've already removed our front lower kind of air valance or air dam on this truck as well. If you still have that equipped, you're just gonna have a series of screws across here that need to be removed with either a Phillips socket or a 10 mil socket. And then in this configuration, we've got two bolts right here toward the center. Again, with our 10, these can be removed. Then moving out toward your wheel openings, you've got a couple more screws underneath here. Again, this may look just a little different with that balance in place. And these are again being removed with that number 10 socket. Continuing around into the wheel opening, you're gonna be removing the two screws that you can see here again with your 10 mil. And then you've got two clips here that need to be popped out as well. For the clips, you just need some sort of pry tool to get in behind there. And then you should be able to just completely separate that center pin from the clip. And then pulling out on that. And kind of pushing in toward the center, you can separate that clip from the fender flare. Now, as you follow your flare up, there's gonna be two more of those hex head screws in behind here. They're kind of hard to see, so we're just gonna show you the clips that they kind of fasten through so that you can get a look at their location. With those removed, you can pull the bottom of your fender liner down, exposing another screw under here. You'll have to remove this one as well. And you should have that on both sides. Now, if you fold this inner fender back out of the way, you can see a couple clips in here that need to be removed so that you can pull this fender flare out. The only tricky part of these is you do have to reach around what is the front side of them and push back while pulling out a little bit on the flare. You can see there that that one then releases. The other one's kind of hard to see. It's about halfway up here, but I can get my finger on it, reaching in behind this bracket and do the same thing. And then that should pop out pretty freely. Looking at this now from the front side, you can see the two clips we just removed. There is obviously a third up here. We've had pretty good luck with that one just popping after we got these two out, but if not, you will have to try and reach up in here a little higher and get that one. Then as you move farther back, there's a couple clips that hold this into the fender. You want to carefully pull out to release those as well if they didn't pop when you were getting these out already. That's about as far as we need to go with the flare. We just kind of want to let this hang so that we can pull the painted front fascia assembly out from behind here and get it off of the truck. In behind here, you're gonna be looking for these Phillips head screws holding the front fascia to the retainer. Those can obviously be removed with a Phillips screwdriver.
From there, you can start to remove the fascia from its kind of snap-in retainers behind here. So you want to carefully pull out on this until you kind of hear that pop. That is this fascia snapping free from the retainer, not anything breaking in behind there. At this point, the entire front fascia is essentially free to come off of the vehicle. The only thing really holding it on is a couple small alignment pins on those upper brackets where we already removed a couple screws. You can carefully lift up on those and then out on this whole assembly to get it off the truck. With the fascia out of the way, you can come back and remove this large aluminum crash bar assembly from the front of your truck. You'll just need a 17 mil socket for that. You've got two bolts down here, kind of running straight back into the frame on each side, as well as two up top here. And keep in mind, when you're removing your final bolts, this thing is gonna be free to fall, so you wanna make sure that it's supported in some way. Now just before this comes off, there are gonna be a couple plastic clips down here that need to be removed. There's one going into each of these lower metal brackets, tying it to a plastic air dam inside of here. So just get your pry tool under the center of those and lift up, popping them free. With those out of the way, we can remove our last two bolts that we had in here, just kind of hand tight. And then we'll pull this forward off the front of these frame horns where it has just a couple alignment pins holding it from dropping at this time. Then switching back to your 10 mil, you've got four screws to remove right here so that we can get this factory support bracket out of the way. From here, this lower plastic section will be removed. It's just gonna have three more of those same style clips on each side here on the inside of the frame rail. From here, we're gonna do some disassembly on the fascia. So you're looking at the inside of it here. Towards me is the top, leaving that to be the bottom. And we're gonna remove first this active air shutter system. So you want to make sure that it gets unplugged up in this top corner. And then you can grab your 10 millimeter socket and remove the three main screws along the bottom as well as three along the top to free this thing up. With those removed, this can pretty easily be lifted out of here and then set off to the side for now. Just pay attention to both what it looks like and its orientation, making sure you know what's the top and what is kind of the back and the front relative to the vehicle. With that out of the way, we'll work to remove the wire harness from inside of here. So a few things with this, you could come through here and carefully remove one clip at a time, but you're not gonna reuse most of these. So you could also very carefully take some side cuts and as long as you're not cutting into the harness or the loom, remove these one at a time that way, freeing a lot of this up. We did choose to salvage at least the two out toward the ends because they may be able to re be reused later on. We're then gonna come through and unplug everything that we can in here. So in the center, we've got a plug there. This we had to remove the sensor from its bracket that was just a couple tabs you pinch in on and lift it up out of its slotted hole. These are your fog lights in here. They've just got a small tab that you press down and pull back to release those connectors. And then if you can reach the sensor connectors down in here, great, you could get those removed at this time. Again, those are a similar style with just a small tab on them that you should be able to press and slide those free. I did wind up having to use a small pry tool to get in here and help me out with that clip, but then you can pull those back and slide them free as well, freeing up pretty much the entire harness along the center of here. Since we're gonna be cutting this plastic, I really wanna get this whole harness up out of the way. So I'm gonna come out and remove these front sensors as well. There's just a small tab on the top and bottom that need to be pried out while you press in gently from the outside and that entire sensor will pop free from the fascia. With the harness out of the way, you'll switch back to a Phillips bit or screwdriver. You can remove the two outside bolts here as well as this small one up top in the center to get this sensor removed.
Then you can remove pretty much all of these silver Phillips head fasteners in here. The only ones you don't have to worry about are the four across the center right here, as well as four down here on the end. But the ones all the way out at the bottom, there should be three down there, and the ones around the perimeter up top can come out. From here, you're essentially trying to remove that black or dark gray plastic trim along the center when looking at the front of your truck. So that's just got a lot of tabs that protrude through the plastic frame in here. Some of these you can get to with your hand and just press out like I have already on kind of this side. And then some of these you might have to get in here with a pry tool while pressing out to get them removed. Once you get all those clips freed up, the lower section should pop out from under here and you can get this out and off to the side. The next section up has a couple similar clips here at the bottom and then a series of clips that you can kind of press on a tab and then press out at the same time. You may need a tool to be able to press out on those and get them freed up. Similarly, as you get all those freed up, this next section will drop out of here. You want to retain this, at least for now, since you're gonna have to pull the sensors from it. And again, these are similar. They've just got a couple tabs that need to be pulled out on while you press back on the sensor itself. From there, you'll flip this over and remove the fog lights. These just have two Phillips head screws, one that's gonna be down through this opening and one here closer to the center. With the hardware removed, you should then be able to lift up and slide this in toward the center, removing it from the fascia. Now, just before we cut this, we do want to salvage this cover, which is for that adaptive cruise sensor. So you've got a couple more tabs in here that you should be familiar with by now. There's just a center locking tab to press on those. And then these snap in a little tighter. You will probably need a pry tool to kind of separate the two locking tabs there and allow you to push that down out of the front. You want to salvage this cover and do your best not to damage it or break it because we will reuse this later on. Now this is a cut bumper if you weren't aware of that by now. So we're going to have to cut some of our factory plastic in behind here. I kind of roughed in our cut line along this inside edge. Essentially what we're trying to do is leave just a little bit of a flange on here to kind of blend in or tuck in behind our bumper. So there's a seam right here that you'll feel on yours and it does get a little tricky when it comes up to this next layer of material because you're not able to follow that perfectly. So you kind of have to visualize that line as it comes across and meets this next edge up here where you then kind of wrap your line over the top and then right down in this seam, kind of cut all of these little tabs off cleanly, allowing all of this to drop out from the center of your front bumper fascia. If you're not super comfortable with this cut right away based on what you're seeing here, you can go ahead and trim just some of the smaller pieces out of this area and then slowly work your way out to this line if that makes you more comfortable during this cut process. Now, if you're wondering what tools to use to cut this plastic, there's a lot of different things that are gonna work for you. We have an air saw or a body saw right here that works pretty well in some cases. We also have a couple different style of cutoff wheels really whatever you have available that's gonna fit down in here and allow you to make these cuts. And then we'll use some sort of flap disc or sanding pad at the end to clean up our rough edges. So it really doesn't matter where you start. I like to start out on an end as it just makes an easy transition here into the center. So we'll go ahead and cut most of these out and then talk about cleaning some of this up in here. Now 
Now just due to the way this thing is assembled, we did have to kind of separate this section, which required us to go back and remove one more screw from the front side, if you will, there. And then we'll still have to clean things up in here and finish our cut through the remaining plastic out here in the bottom. Once you get through the rest of your cut out here, you should have this entire section separated. And again, we still have to come in here and kind of finish some things up. So we want to work to basically flatten out the two sections that are gonna be standing up or raised up out here on the end. So we'll just trim all of that off flat. And then again, we'll come back through here and trim out all of these tabs before cleaning up all of our cut edges. So here is a look at pretty much our final cut. I do still have just a little bit of cleanup work to do on this side with my flap disc. We were able to come back in and reinstall one of our Phillips head screws kind of in this location on each side to help tie these two sections back together. And then I'll flip this over real quick to show you what it looks like from the outside. With it spun around, you can see you're left with about a 3 8 to half inch wide flange along here. There is some variation just because of the shape of the fascia from the starting point. And then it's nice and smooth along this edge with maybe just an eighth inch of material hanging down here, pretty much all the way across. Now you may or may not be able to see, but you will see it when you're doing yours. There's a couple tabs on here that kind of have to be sanded down to make this a nice flat surface, which leaves just a little bit of black plastic material in here. Depending on the color of your vehicle, you might not like that. Most of this is gonna be hidden in behind the bumper once everything's installed. But if you're really concerned about it, you can go ahead and mask this off at this time and just paint that inner flange black. Once you're happy with your cut and you have everything trimmed up and cleaned up, this assembly is now ready to go back on the vehicle, pretty much just in the reverse order of how it came off, minus obviously this lower section. Before the bumper goes on the truck is when you're gonna to wanna to install all the accessories into here. So you've got a light bar location up top for a 20 inch light bar. You've got fog light locations that are gonna accept the factory fogs as well as the Baja Designs fog light SAE replacement kit. Obviously standard winch mounting location down here. We'll start out by walking you through the fog lights. So I have the factory ones here. Essentially we're just catching two of the tabs on these when we bolt them in to the tabs down here. Now these are side specific, so keep that in mind and get them installed in the correct location. We're gonna bolt these in with black quarter 20 button head hardware. Again, just grabbing those two holes. So you've got the top one toward the outside and the bottom one toward the inside of the bumper here. You could then center those up from the front side and then grab a 5 30 seconds hex and tighten them up. This is that Baja Designs kit, so we have it assembled already here. Go ahead and follow their instruction for how to get this put together. And then one of their holes is slotted. That's gonna go toward the outside here in the bumper. And since it's slotted, we can loosely install one of those bolts and nuts out here. These are the same quarter 20s you'd use with the factory light. And then you can slide that slot onto there and install the remaining bolt and nut in here to secure that in place. Of course, get your wires out of the way there. And then once again, from the front side, you can center these and then tighten them with your 5 30 seconds. So that's just a look at the difference between the two lighting styles installed here from the back side. I'm now gonna take this one out and install our second Baja so we can move forward. From there, we'll install our 20 inch light bar, which is another Baja Designs product. This one we did have to switch out their bolts for something a little different with some spacers in here. So keep that in mind. That'll vary a little bit from manufacturer to manufacturer, but we've got two slotted tabs here so you can get those installed. We'll kind of roughly aim this here and then tighten it up. Next, if you're gonna be running a winch, go ahead and install your fair lead now while you have easy access to the back side of this. This is a Factor 55, really any similar style to this where it's just a nice clean kind of oval style design without any large protrusions should fit down in here.
From there, if you plan to install a winch, of course, now is the time to get that in. So we've got four slotted holes here on the lower winch plate and then four recessed access hole locations here on the bottom. So that should just sit down in here nicely. So the one I have here is a Warren VR Evo 10S. That's what we're installing here. You're gonna bolt that in using your provided hardware from Warren or your winch manufacturer. Go ahead and route your cable out through that fair lead while the thing is still loose and you have the most room. And then again, use their hardware to get that bolted in. You can then grab your gray textured logo plate, trim plate, if you will, for the front. That's just gonna use six of those black quarter 20 button heads. You'll line it up out here and just install those bolts through the front with nuts, of course, on the inside. Additionally, you have a gray textured lower accent plate or skid, if you will, that's gonna nest in down here. It will kind of cover up these two front winch holes, so make sure that that is tight before you get this bolted in. And then it's just black quarter 20 button heads throughout the perimeter here with nuts on the inside. Once you have all that assembled, tightened up, this thing is ready to be installed on the truck. You can then find that front radar sensor. It's gonna be relocated into the bracket we provide, so you'll need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the three screws here. You do want to save those. With all three of those out of the way, this bracket should just lift off. And you can set ours right back over top. It's really only gonna install one way. It is indexed on a couple pins, but obviously the connector's gotta fit through there as well. And then once you track down those screws, you can reinstall all three of those and carefully tighten them up. You can then take that whole assembly. You're gonna basically just place it right down here on these three standoffs. And then we provide you coarse thread number 10 screws. These are unthreaded standoffs, so you're basically gonna be using this coarse thread screw to cut new threads into there. All that really means is you may have to put a little bit of pressure downward as you start to tighten these up, but they'll cut in just fine in that plastic. And then you just wanna get all three started before tightening anything up. From there, just be sure you get that plugged back in to the main wire harness, and then we'll install that grill shutter up on the front of the truck. To support the bottom of that shutter, you're gonna find this bracket. You're gonna need to bolt it into factory M6 threaded holes right along here using the horizontal slots and the factory bolts for those locations. So those are just a black hex head screw. We'll go ahead and get all four of these started. You can then just center that up from left to right and tighten it up with your 10 mil socket. As far as bolting the shutter on, you just wanna make sure you have it in the correct orientation. So the connector should be up and toward the passenger side. And then down here on the bottom, we give you 5 16 hex head bolts with washers. Those will slide through the factory hole here and then You've got a spacer as well that needs to slip onto each of those. So that's gonna go between this shutter and the bracket that we just installed down here. And then you'll slide this in through the vertically slotted hole and install the nut here on the back side. It's still gonna wobble a little bit there, but with at least that center one in, that should support it. So you can get the remaining two in along the outside. With all three of those in, you'll need a half inch socket to tighten them up. We are gonna kind of push this up, at least to get it up past the bottom edge of the bracket. That'll kind of help with winch clearance, making sure you've got room for your control box on the top of those. And then you just wanna make sure it's as level as possible so that it's easiest to line up and install your hardware up top later on. We 
can now install the bumper on the truck. Basically what you're gonna do here is grab the lower factory hardware for these bottom holes down here. We're gonna slide the bumper in using this threaded stud as an alignment pin on each side and get those started. And that'll kind of support the thing so we can rotate it up and install our top mounting hardware. Keeping in mind that you just put a winch in it and a bunch of lights and everything in it, it may be a little bit heavy, so you can grab a friend to help you install it on your truck. You can support it with a jack, whatever really works for you given the situation you're installing it in. Now when installing our bumper, we did run into or find out that these lower tabs potentially are gonna interfere with your 20 inch light bar. It's really gonna vary a little bit depending on what manufacturer light bar and the individual dimensions of that light bar. Our Baja bar is a couple inches deep, so we're just gonna trim these off. The cleanest and easiest way to do it is to just use the factory edge of this thing as a guide. So we just place some tape there for a nice straight line, and we're gonna nip these all right off of here, leaving one nice flat straight edge. Again, for this, I'm just using my air saw, but much like when you did some small trimming on the front of your fascia, you can use a cutoff wheel, whatever you have available to you. Just pay close attention to everything else around so you don't damage any existing components. So doing this in a lift like we are here, I have the luxury of using our transmission jack to kind of support this thing and get it up into place. If you don't have that, you can grab a friend and each grabbing one side, you can get this lined up on the mounts and at least resting on the alignment pins there where we're gonna look to install the factory hardware in the two lower holes on each side. And then if you're lifting this up, you gotta kind of watch out for your winch. Make sure you get it tucked in behind here before you go up too high. And then at the right height, we should pretty much be able to just slide right back onto those pins. So if you remember from the disassembly, those you'll need a 17 to tighten up. And before you do that, you'll find the 716 hex bolts with washers that you're gonna drop through the top of these two holes and through the bumper mount. You can install the flange nuts on the bottom and we'll tighten these up using a 5 8 or ratchet. Just before you tighten that hardware, you do wanna just take a look at the edge of the two mounts. You can use that as a pretty good guide to get this whole bumper centered up here on the truck. So kind of paying attention to this back edge and this edge up here should do the trick. And then tighten these to draw the bumper back nice and tight. And then go ahead and tighten that top hardware. Now while you have the bumper hanging here and you have easy access to everything around it is a great time to make sure you get all your lights wired up. So we did that with our center light bar here on this 20 inch. The Baja Designs SAE replacement kit gives you a nice set of connectors there to plug right back into the factory fog light harness, which will kind of do that as well as these two sensors as the fascia is going on, kind of just before we get it snapped into its final location. Once again, our transmission jack comes into play here to help us out if you have a rolling cart or a rolling toolbox, something you can set this on for a few minutes while you complete this step. That works out great. Just something to get it where these harnesses will reach. You'll slide the sensors in behind the rubber grommets here, and those you're just gonna work right into place, basically pressing them up as far as they can go. It should wind up just a little bit past flush on the grommet there, and then you just gotta be sure as you lift this up into position that you're tucking this harness back in behind the bumper nice and safely. And then again, same thing on those fog light harnesses. From there, you'll just flip this up into position, kind of getting it tucked back in behind the bumper. Again, watching all your wiring along the way and making sure those outside wings get tucked back in behind the fender flares. Now at this point, for those of you not installing the Viper Cut style wings and you're just gonna be running this center blitz bumper portion, 
you're pretty much nearing the end. It's starting to kind of take shape so you can see what things are going to look like. You really just need to go back through at this point and make sure all of your wiring connections get plugged back in for all of that factory wire harness stuff. Any of your aftermarket stuff, once again, tidy up the wiring on that. And then it's just going back through and re reinstalling all of that factory hardware that holds this remaining fascia portion in place. All stuff you should be pretty familiar with because we took it apart, obviously. So fender liners out in the wheel opening area, fender flares, make sure those are getting snapped back in. And of course the small plastic underhood covers up here before closing that hood and wrapping up your install. Again, those of you not installing the wings are still gonna have the mounting holes down here for those. So on the visible holes out here, we're gonna have you install 3 8 black button head bolts. You can reach in from underneath to install the nuts and then just centering those up. You'll tighten them with a 7 30 seconds hex to kind of fill and cover those holes. And lastly down here, you're gonna notice that this is obviously still hanging somewhat loose. We provide you a tie-in bracket there. You're gonna have 5 16 black button head hardware to bolt this into the bottom slotted hole in the bumper itself. And then out into the existing hole here on the bottom of this fascia. And then tightening these up with a 3 16 hex, you wanna go ahead and just make sure that you're happy with the gap and the alignment here as you tighten that up. And that'll secure this over time on both sides. So that's really it for this install. As always, if you guys have any questions at all about this installation or anything else we offer here at Victory 4x4, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at victory4x4.com or just call us at 269-459-8447.